we're going to look at indexed views. Um, an indexed view is a materialized view in that the data that it comprises the view is actually stored on disk. Okay, let's circle back to the standard view. When the standard view is created, you, the view definition is stored on disk, the data is on disk also. You use the view, the definition, the data comes together, it's compiled in front of you. This can be a very expensive operation, especially if you're looking at many tables in the join or aggregated data it can be extremely expensive. So for the sake of speed and efficiency, you can, you can materialize the few. You can, you can create a unique, you can build a unique clustered index on the view and it materializes it on disk so that the SQL Server is now uh, managing a, another index. So let's take a look. Oh yes, best candidates for the index view frequently occurring aggregations, especially on large tables, and frequently occurring joins, especially when they're like 4, 5, 6, 17 tables in the join. Let's use the CIAC database. You have to have certain session settings that are uh, either on or off uh, based on the setting itself. These have to be in place before you can create an indexed view. Okay, we've got that taken care of. I'm going to first create an index view which joins multiple tables and, and contains a created uh, a, 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 a column. A, a. And the create view um, statement, my naming convention uses a VI to indicate that it is, it is an index view. With schema binding, this limits any changes that you can make to the underlying table until you drop the view. Then you can make table changes, recreate the view. All right, we'll go ahead and execute that, and we then create a unique clustered index on the view, give it a name, on the view, it has to be on a column which can be, which qu can qualify for uniqueness. In this case, it's the order detail ID, and when I do a select from that indexed view, there's my data. It comes back. It doesn't, it doesn't have to compile and assemble it. The next one I'm going to show you is it, it, with aggregates, aggregating the sales by cookie type. There's also a situation where you can't have the columns that are with, with null. It, it, because we have turned on concat null yields null, that is an indecisive situation. So if you have a null condition, you have to compensate for that. The create view statement, again, it's a VI cookie orders total by type with schema binding. Um, cookie type is going to be the categorizing criteria. I'm going to use a count big for order numbers just in case it's like a very, very big number. I'm going to sum up the total number of boxes sold and then I'm going to calculate the total sales by total number of boxes sold uh, multiplied by the cookie price per box. But, oh, here's a problem. Cookie price per box is nullable. Therefore, I have to say, should you find a null in cookie price per box, use one instead. And then join the tables together, group by cookie type, and go. Let's create that view. Apply the unique clustered index on that view. Cookie type is the clustering, uh, is unique values that can, by which you can cluster. And now, when I say select this is what I get. This is my summary report that I can just generate at will. And that's it for now.